Hi everybody, Tim Coffey here. Today I'm going to show how I printed the digital stamps I used to make these Christmas cards. The two-part Christmas card tutorials are up on my YouTube channel right now. You can download these free digital stamps I created at my website, timcoffeyart.com. Just click on the digital stamps category in the left-hand navigation bar once you're at my website. There's also a link to them below this video. First, you need to launch Adobe Photoshop Elements. I'm using version 10 of Elements, but for this tutorial, you don't need the latest version. All the older versions should be adequate to follow along. Choose the File menu from the upper menu bar. Choose New and then select Blank File. I'll be printing on a sheet of 8.5 by 11 inch watercolor paper, but I'm making the outer dimensions of the Photoshop Elements document 8 by 10 inches. I make the document smaller than the paper because inkjet printers usually can't print all the way to the edge of the paper. I'm using 300 pixels per inch for the resolution, and I'm leaving the color mode set to RGB color and the background set to white. You can type in a file name for this image. I'm calling it Snowman Stamps. Now the blank document is ready to import the stamp. Go back up to the file menu and scroll down to place. You need to navigate through your computer to the folder where you saved the digital stamp. I'm using a Mac computer so it might be a little different on a Windows computer. Once you find your image, click the place button on the lower right hand corner of the window. You can move the stamp around on the page now. Go up to the top menu again, click view and scroll down to rulers. This will place a ruler along the top and left side of your document. You can adjust the size of the stamp by clicking the corner and dragging it to make the image smaller or larger. You can draw some guides by placing your arrow on the ruler, click and hold the mouse button down, and drag the guide into place. These guides will not show up on the final print. They are just a visual guide to help you move images into the proper place. Once you have the stamp at the size you want it, you need to double click the center of the image to make the size permanent. On the bottom right hand of the screen, you'll find the layers palette. This is what determines the layer you are working on. When you placed your stamp, a new layer was created for it. You just need to make sure the layer you want to work on is the layer that's highlighted in blue. Clicking once on a layer will select that layer. If you double click a layer, a box pops up that allows you to change the name of that layer. To duplicate the image, go up to the layer menu and scroll down to duplicate layer. Click OK in the dialog box that appears. Now go to your tools palette on the left hand side of your page and make sure your move tool is selected. The move tool is the top tool in the tools palette. Click on the image and move it to the right until you get it in the place you want it. One little trick is to hold down the shift key at the same time you're moving the image. Holding the shift key will keep the duplicated image lined up with the original image. If you don't keep the shift key pressed, you can move the image in any direction. Go back to the layer menu and repeat the process. Duplicate the layer. Make sure the Move tool is selected. Hold the Shift key and slide the image into place. Now just keep repeating that process until you have all the images in place. Each time you duplicate a layer, it makes a copy in a new layer. And you can choose to work on any stamp by choosing the layer it's on in the Layers palette on the bottom right.
Now the image is ready to print, so I need to load my printer with a piece of watercolor paper trimmed to 8.5 by 11 inches. Go to the File menu and scroll down to Print to open up the Print dialog box. Choose U.S. Letter as the paper size. Set it to print at actual size. You can enter the number of copies you want to print. It's already set at 1, so I don't need to do that. Now click the Print button. Another box pops up which allows you to select a printer. And then hit Print. Now you can save this document so it will be there for future use. Go up to the file menu again, scroll down to save as. I always uncheck embed color profile out of habit, but you can leave it that way if you want. I'm not sure exactly what it does. Click save. In this case I had already saved it so it's asking me if I want to replace it. And this is fine in this case. But you want to make sure you don't save your edited files over your original stamp. You always want to keep your original stamps unaltered in their original form. So always name the new file something else to avoid replacing the original. Now that you're done, you can quit out of Photoshop Elements. Just go up to the Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor, scroll down and select Quit. This tutorial might seem like it has a lot of instructions, but once you get the hang of it, it really becomes second nature. You can find the full tutorials for these Christmas cards on my YouTube channel, Tim Coffee Art. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.